Hey guys, today we're going to be looking a bit more at Throne of Eldrain spoil- or not Throne of Eldrain, that was last set. We're going to be looking at those beyond death spoilers. And we're going to get off super fast. I won't really have any time to do that much editing because school started back up. But, uh, so I'm going to do my best to keep bringing you content. Which may mean it's a bit lower quality, but I hope you can y'all can deal with that. So first card I'd like to point out is one with the stars. Now this card is actually the same as a test card which was enchantment eyes which i thought was a very interesting design enchant creature enchantment it's an enchantment it loses all other card types same card and i like to point out that that means that more of these test cards could show up as actual cards and many of them are very cool i especially like gunk slug and some of the other cards that appear but I'd just like to point that out because I find it very interesting. Now I've got Heliod, Sun Crowned. Now this guy has had quite a controversy around him, mostly about how he combos with Walking Ballista. But I'm not too sure whether that will actually... Uh, I know how to spell words. Um, it seems too slow for me because Walking Ballista has to have two counters on it already when you give it the lifelink ability which means that you couldn't activate this until maybe turn four and kill your opponent on turn four now at the current modern state that might be fast enough but in future times remember when freaking uh all the dredge decks were around running bridge from below and it was just not fun. But I feel like that could not be fast enough for modern. A deck I think it would work better in is Kitchen Finks, which uses this creature, which if you're able to put plus on plus on counters on it, you can infinitely loop it with a sacrifice outlet. And that works a lot better from my point of view because it gains life, triggers Heliod counters, and gain infinite life. Uh, as well as infinite sack triggers. Now we've got Atris, Oracle of half Truths, 4 mana, 3, 2 me with Menace. And when it ETBs, you look at the top three cards of your library, uh, and the opponent, or a opponent of your choice, puts a face-up and a face-down pile out of those cards, and then you get to take one of the piles. So it's a bit of a guessing game to see if you can outsmart your opponent and try to get the best cards from it. This is very similar to a card printed in Eldritch Moon, a blue card, which is Fortune's Favor. This one has an additional card and is at instant speed, uh, but this could be interesting, I guess. It doesn't seem that powerful of a card, uh, because in a lot of games, a 3-2 Menace really isn't going to do that much, I think. And the deck that you'd want to have this all this value in would be in a control deck, which isn't really looking to be aggressive with Menace. So I'm really not sure where this would go. Um, that again, it's an interesting design. I like to see Fortune's Favor revisited. I'm just really not sure if it goes anywhere. Next, we have Idyllic Tutor, which is a reprint, as you probably know. It lets you tutor for an enchantment for three mana. Last time, I believe it was printed was Shadow Moor, or Eventide. But I'm not sure where this goes. Maybe if there's an enchantment combo deck, or maybe it could act like a tutor effect in an enchantment toolbox deck. That could be interesting. But... It seems like it doesn't do that much to me. I don't think it will really see any play. Although we do have Ashiok's Erasure, which works a lot like Exclusion Ritual, except it's a counter spell. And this means that you're able to flash it in, counter a spell, even spells that are uncounterable, say a Abrupt Decay, and your opponents can cast any more spells with that same name. I think that's pretty interesting. Whether it's too expensive to go into any decks might be a difficult question, but eh, it could be interesting. Uh, then there's some lower rarity stuff. 
most of it seems like jank. Um, I just a lot of these escape cards have way too high of escape costs, like Glimpse of Freedom. It's a bit like Think Twice, except you have to exile so many cards from your graveyard. I don't even know if it's even worth it at that point. Or Sweet Oblivion, although a mill deck might be pretty good in this format. It's an uncommon, and just milling is... I don't know if that's good enough. But we do have Dalakos, Crafter of Wonders, which is a 3-mana 2-4 that can tap to add double blue or colorless for only artifacts or activating abilities of artifacts and he gives your equipped creatures flying in haste that's pretty good i want to play a commander deck with this guy maybe play a bunch of like zero equip equipment that so that he can get haste immediately tap down cast a bunch of things it seems like a lot of fun from my point of view and standard though i really don't know the equipments we do have aren't that good so maybe if we get something good enough to make the archetype viable, maybe? But I don't really think so. We also have Nessian Boar, which is a strange card. It's a 5-mana 10-6 with a Breaker of Armies ability, a lore. But whenever it becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller draws a card. Now, Breaker of Armies is good because it basically wipes... All of your opponent's board and lets you get in with a bunch of other things. But I just feel that letting your opponent draw that many cards really isn't worth it. And if this thing... I mean, in limited, this is going to be amazing. But in standard, like a green stompy deck, could use it to a very powerful ability. I'm just wondering if maybe against other creature-based decks if it will be that effective because your opponent will be gaining so much advantage from the drawing of cards. So I'm not sure if this is going to see play, if it is going to see play in a green stompy deck, if that is a thing. Uh, you might only see like one of, maybe two of. It's interesting, but mm, I'm not too sure on it. Next we have Farika's Spawn. This is an uncommon. I just wanted to mention it because... It has an escape ability, and it escapes as a 5-6 for 6, and your opponent has to sack a creature, which I think is pretty good. Uh, this might put C play in standard. It's very grindy and just really nice. I want to play a lot of it in limited. Next we have this uh, card printed in Korean, Loth. She's a 4-mana 3-5 region spider. And whenever your opponent casts an answer or sorcery, you get another spider with reach. A 1-2. Now, this is very interesting. In standard, though, I don't really see if it's that good. Maybe if you're able to resolve it against a control deck, it can be very powerful. But other than that, I don't know. Because if you just kill it, then all you get is a 1-2 behind. And if you kill with a creature, you get nothing. So I'm not really sure. Because it's just a hard card to, to like think about. Because we don't know how standard's going to end up being. If there's like a spell-based like combo deck with playing it, a bunch of is it things, casting a bunch of spells, maybe... It could be useful in like a sideboard, but I'm not sure if it really goes in main deck, especially because it's legendary. Next, we have Tectonic Giant, which is a 4-mana 3-4, and whenever he attacks or becomes a target of a spell ability opponent controls, you get to bolt each opponent, or you take the top two cards of your library, and you get to basically impulse draw one of them. This is extremely interesting. It works a lot like Bone shaker or bone crusher giant and that it hurts the opponent when they target it which i think is a good ability because hexproof is a bit too one-sided in that there's not you can much you can do about this about it but this has a hexproof-esque ability it's just that you can target it but if you do bad stuff will happen the drawing cards is very nice this could work very well in an aggro deck because like bolting your opponent on every attack is pretty good not going to lie. I think this might see quite a bit of play, and I kind of want to play it myself. Makes me want to play aggro, which is usually not me. Also, just want to mention, 
This is another red sacrifice card. John Sacrifice is going to be even better. Uh, so I'm not sure. Also, I like the name they gave him, number one Bolas fan. Next, we have Pelucrano's Unchained, which is an interesting card. It works kind of like a Ugin's Conjurant, except I think a better like comparison for it is Phyrexian Hydra, which gives all sources of damage dealt to it in fact, basically. So I think that... I really don't know what to think about this. He can fight creatures, but the problem is he's going to shrink extremely quickly. A 12-12 is pretty dummy thick, though. So maybe you play this on turn four, attack in, you can fight something, and he's going to die. But then next turn, you can just escape him back, and it'll be a 12-12 and extremely scary. And then you can just continue to have fun because you can keep getting him back as a 12-12. Now, exiling six cards from a graveyard is quite a cost, but I think that being able to destroy a ton of creatures will be a, a lot of fun. <laughs> and very interesting. Now we've got Wave Break Hippocamp. This is part of a bunch of cards where whenever you cast your first spell during an opponent's turn, you have an effect. This one draws you a card, which I hate, because this will make the uh, green-blue flash decks even better, because you're going to be able to draw more cards. You're, Oh my gosh. Um, is that wolf still, still going to be in standard? I'm not sure if that was M20 or uh, M19. I'm pretty sure it was M20. So uh, that deck is definitely going to be a thing. I'm pretty sure of that. Now we have Nylea's Intervention. This is very uh, situational, I'll say that. You can tutor for... It's green, green, and X. You choose one. You tutor for X lands, not basic lands, any land. Or you deal twice X damage to each creature of flying. So basically, it's a super tornado, or it's a mass land tutor. This is never going to see play in standard. But in Commander, I expect to see this a lot in land decks so they can get all their lands together and just blast the opponent. Uh, a couple more cards, which we've already seen, and they're nice arts. Um, and that seems like everything, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll try to keep making tons of content.